Right, we've had a bit of a setback because the driver board for this phase here, for some reason I connected it up using some more substantial wires <coughs> and some stray connector ended up blowing one of the boards. And I believe it's this driver board, so I've got this unit out. Um, so, uh, quickie, <coughs> showing you how to get these things off because nobody has, they've just shown them off. So you have these little sort of like corner pieces. There's three of those, yeah. And then you've got to undo all six of these bolts. Uh, these ones are quite straightforward, but the one that's connecting to this actually, because it's underneath, makes it quite difficult to get out. You can get those out, but the one you can't get out is that screw there in the middle of the picture, that one, because it's covered. So whoever created this, I don't know. I'm not quite sure how they expected it to come out. <laughs> you know, because you've got a chicken the egg situation there. You have to take the connector off to get to the thing, and then you have to get to the thing to release the connector. Uh, but you can take uh, that one out there, and that one, and these two here, and it releases that. So I'm guessing that's the, the best way to do it. Although I didn't do it. <coughs> yeah. You see? So you've got these here so if you if you basically undo you can see it there you see so if you undo those that section comes away yeah and the same with these ones there's a colour plate this one here <coughs> which goes over there which you can see okay and if you remove that you get access to actually absolutely nothing <laughs> basically so it's a complete waste of time taking that off if you do and these corner pieces, they kind of go on there. I'll just put the screws back in. You see how they go? Can you see? Okay, and they fit onto there like that with those screws. Yeah, and that's the quickest way. You get those corner feet. I didn't quite do it like that, but once I undid it, it, it sort of came apart. And I guess you could leave this bit connected if you're bringing it away with that. Yeah, and then just do the others. And then eventually get to that and get that off, which is a bit shit, really. And you've got this kind of bolt here which I guess is, a, is one of these things I'm thinking that you unfasten um, but it's kind of holding that together so and this is on the inside this this is the outside yeah. anyway uh, these guys here the ones that hold the actual phases in that's actually not the problem you don't need to get those off because it's this nut that you need to undo which fastens to um, that okay and you can get a spanner in and just undo it and then it comes off you have to do un undo all these there's five bolts here around the coolant housing and then there's another one another one you can reach through inside with a long one I can't remember the size of these uh, but these ones they're 50 torques if you want to undo them it's a 17 mil. And get your spanner in there and get that off. And the, the ones on the outside. Yeah. Yep. Still not quite sure how you get the whole thing out. I think the only way to do it, to actually, uh, I mean, it may well be that when you undo all of these, certainly these ones here, that this comes away because it's attached to a coolant housing. And then you could slot the whole thing out. I don't know. Sorry, I'm not pointing it. But if you undo all of these ones, the coolant housing, maybe it'll come away. I don't know. Mm. Yep. And then undo those. And this is kind of inside there. You can see it's kind of notched down. So you can't pull this out on its own once you've undone that. Which is also a bit shit, to be frank. So, you know. <laughs> Yes, well thought through guys. People who make these things, they don't really consider the ability to repair them. And to be honest, yes, they don't really tend to go wrong. The only thing that will go wrong would be IGBT, but in reality, the, this, this unit really wouldn't fail. You've got the driver board in there, everything's protected. The IGBTs, I'm sure they'll have an overcurrent or an over voltage in there somewhere to detect if it's too high. So really these shouldn't fail, but 
you know, for people like me who experiment. So just, just so you're aware, that board kind of goes on there, and the only way I could get it off, to be honest, was to cut through the wires there, right, and to here. And you will notice something that nobody else seems to have picked up on the recording. Nobody else seems to have picked up on. You notice here, I've shot this side, I think. Can you see how it says high side, low side? So in actual fact, these have both high side and low side. I'm presuming, like, for instance, the top would be the high side and the bottom would be the low side. Or something. Or perhaps these four here would be high side and those four would be low side or maybe the alternate no it wouldn't be like that it wouldn't be alternating i'm thinking the tops are high side so they connect to this thing here same with this one connects to this one so this is the high side input uh, no it's not this is the positive yes because it conducts that to the output doesn't it so they're all connected to this side and then the underside here which you can't see will be the they'll be all low side and they'll be connecting to the negative rail which is underneath there which I haven't revealed because there's still a cover on it which will then connect up to this output here I'm sure so basically all of the top I'm thinking it depends if this is a positive is it so looking from this so mark these up that's the positive and the positive is on the inside because this is the outside and the negatives on the outside so I was looking at this that's the negative and that's the positive which means this side here all this top section here will probably be the low side part right so all these bank here and this bank here will be connected up to the top will be a low side and then the underside will be the high side so the insides are the high sides I'm thinking because this is the positive and this is the negative so the insides will be the part that will be the high side and the outsides will be the low sides is my guess without taking it apart I'm not going to because there's really not much point because I'm trying to get a replacement for this which I might end up making if I can't get one but there's people who've got like for instance they've got um, these things that have been in uh, floods where it's this has been partially submerged but the top boards will probably be okay this is actually upside down right so you'd have the driver board itself will be in water but this top one will probably be okay so if I can get hold of somebody who's got a flood damaged one and then just take the top inverter off it or whatever is you know working because these are sealed as well so the actual you know if that inverter part if that section of the inverter board isn't in water it'd be all right there's a guy who had one of these and he was advertising it and he was showing it and he took it apart and he took that off and he showed that it actually had the water inside it you know if i can contact him and ask him if he could plug us the inverter board then i'll be in business yes Anyway, that's uh, a quick...